So this is where we are in the story. God made a perfect world. But people messed it up. So God started over again. But people still made bad choices. But God had a plan to rescue them. And he would use a special family to do it. They were the Israelites. They were living in Egypt. And they kept growing and growing. This made some people nervous. Like the Egyptians. Because the more people you had, the more power you had. And the Egyptians liked power. So instead of kicking them out of Egypt, or becoming their friends, they captured them and made them their slaves. Do you think that would stop God's plan? <sighs> yeah, me neither. But the Egyptians thought it would make a difference. So they made the Israelites their slaves. And made them do hard, hard work. Like building cities. Brick by brick by brick. 
but the Egyptians were still scared of the Israelites. So the Pharaoh did something drastic. He was the Egyptians' king. He made an order to kill all Israelite boys when they were born. Whoa. Some of the Israelites didn't obey. One mom came up with a plan to save her baby. The baby's name was Moses. So after he was born, she put him in a comfy basket like this and tucked Moses in it and put it by some reeds in the river. And she waited. She was probably pretty scared. Moms are usually pretty careful with little babies. Well, guess who came to the river? The Pharaoh's daughter. She knew the baby wasn't an Egyptian. So he should have been killed when he was born. But she felt sorry for him. So she decided to help him. She had an idea. She paid a woman to take care of him until he wasn't a baby anymore. Well, guess who that woman was? It was the baby's real mother. Once he was big enough, the baby was brought to the palace. Where Moses grew up like a prince. Like royalty. When he was older. Much older. Like 40. He saw an Egyptian beating an Israelite. Moses got really angry. Because he was an Israelite too. And he killed the Egyptian that was hurting the slave. When he realized what he'd done, he tried to hide it by burying the Egyptian. But the next day, someone recognized him. Hey, you're that. And knew the bad thing Moses had done. So Moses ran away. Escaped and hid in the desert for a long time. But God didn't forget about Moses. While Moses was hiding, God was gonna call him to a really important mission. He had a big job for him. And even Moses wasn't sure he could do it. But that's another part of God's story. Let my people go. Moses and Aaron told Pharaoh, The God of the Israelites says you must let his people go free. Otherwise, bad things will happen to you. But Pharaoh would not listen. So God turned the water in Egypt into blood. No one could drink it. Then he filled the Egyptian houses with frogs. Frogs were everywhere. Still Pharaoh would not listen. So God filled the skies of Egypt with gnats. They covered the people like dust. Then he struck the land of Egypt with flies. Still, Pharaoh would not listen. So God killed the animals of Egypt. Horses, donkeys, camels, sheep, cows, and goats all died. Then he covered the Egyptian people with sores. Still, Pharaoh would not listen. God sent hail to crush the crops of Egypt. Their barley and flax were destroyed. Then he sent locusts to eat what fruit remained. Still Pharaoh would not listen. So God sent darkness over the land. But again, Pharaoh would not listen. God said, I will kill every firstborn son in Egypt and all the firstborn of the animals. My people must kill a lamb, eat it, and put its blood on their doorposts. I will see the blood and pass over their houses. Those children will not die. You will call this Passover and always remember it. The Israelites obeyed God, but the Egyptian firstborn sons died, even Pharaoh's son. Finally, Pharaoh listened. He let the Israelites go. So kids, we know that God is really, really powerful. And now you know that God has the power to do strange and wonderful things. The Bible is filled with strange occurrences and odd events. And in today's story, the people of God were enslaved in Egypt. So God brought ten plagues upon the land. Through these plagues, like the frogs, filling the country and gnats rising from the dust, God displayed His power and He showed His love for His people. And He proved that He is the one true God. We know that our God is powerful. Hey boys and girls, 
Are you ready to colour in today's Bible story with us? today's craft, we're going to make origami jumping frogs to remind us of the ten plagues. Fold the rectangle in half, crease firmly and unfold it. Bring the top right corner down to the left and unfold it right away. Bring the top left corner down to the right and unfold it. Flip the paper over. Bring the top of the rectangle down where the diagonal folds meet. Unfold it and turn the paper over once again. Make a squash fold by bringing the sides to the middle so they meet each other. Then. Flatten the top of your rectangle to make a triangle. Fold the two corners of the triangle up to the center. Fold the right side of the paper towards the centre and repeat with the left side. Go back to the triangles we made earlier and fold them from the top out. Fold the bottom of the paper up to the top corner of the triangle. Fold the paper down to the bottom edge. And now it's time to turn your model over to reveal your jumping frog. Are you ready to play? To make your frog jump, lightly press the back and release it. 
How far can you make your frog jump? We've loved having you join us this morning for Online Kids Church. We hope you've enjoyed today's Bible story about Moses as well as our exciting craft. We'll see you next week. We've got some exciting new Bible character puppets for you to cut out and add to your collection. Ask mom and dad to print today's template. Color in and cut out Moses and Pharaoh as well as the 10 different plagues. My God is strong, He'll do anything big or small. Nothing is impossible for a super wonderful God. Every day I can know God is always there. the most powerful person you know. How did God display his power in Egypt? How is Jesus our Passover lamb?